Lab number two is titled Thin Spherical Lenses, and the setup is relatively easy. We have an optical bench here with a millimeter ruler and an incandescent light source. The first thing is to take and set up your object. We have a screen here with a crossed target arrow and then a yellow filter. Place that on the bench. You next take a screen, which is just one of these holders with some paper wrapped around it. And then pick a position for that. I have mine at 250 millimeters. And then we're going to take measurements using three different convex lenses. I'll start out with the first one, which is a 48 millimeter convex lens and you place the lens in between the object and the target. At some point near the object, you'll see an image on the screen, and you just move the lens until it's in focus. Right about there for me. You record this measurement as D1. I have roughly 77 millimeters. You next move the lens close to the screen until you see a new object. Right about there. I'm not sure if the camera will catch it. It's quite small, but it's the same object, just smaller. You record this measurement as D2. I recorded at about 175.5 millimeters. You can then solve for the focal length using the following equation. F equals L squared minus D squared over 4L. In this case, L is the length between the object and the screen. And D represents the difference between D1 and D2, the positions of the lens. My, my experimental result was 49.8 millimeters, which is pretty close to the actual 48 millimeter focal length. And so we're going to test out an unknown focal length of this lens. And I'm going to place the screen at some arbitrary point, like let's say 400 millimeters. And then I repeat the same step to find an image. And it's about there, red recorded, around 59 millimeters for D1, and then we go find D2. Oh, very close. And it's about focus it here. It's very hard to see. Might not show up on the camera. And we record D2 as. 355 millimeters, and we use that same equation to figure out the sun-node focal length, which is around 43. Okay, and now for the last part of the experiment, it involves determining the focal length of a concave lens. And this procedure is a little bit different than before. You're going to have your positive lens which is the convex lens, 127 millimeters, and our concave lens, which we know to be minus 22, but we'll be trying to confirm that measurement. So you essentially place the negative lens between your positive lens and the screen, somewhat like this. And now you're basically going to do the same procedure, adjusting the positive lens until you see an image. This image, in our experience, is actually very faint, so you might need to turn off the light in order to get uh, a proper reading. But you basically do the same procedures before, finding D1 and D2. And then using the same equation, instead knowing the focal length of this lens, you're going to find L, which is the distance between screen and the virtual image here, as formed by the lens, or the negative lens. And then once you have L, you can use some uh, linear geometry in order to figure out the distance 
from the negative lens to the virtual image, and that is your image distance, S sub i. And since 1 over S sub i plus 1 over S sub o, the distance of the object, equals 1 over f, the focal length, you can then solve for f for this lens. And experimentally, we were within 17% of the minus 22 uh, focal length lens.